Um, lots of questions on the table, so I'm going to open up a bunch more and try to focus on some of the things we've been doing. But first, I want to uh, kind of note Donnie Collins is here. Donnie, raise your hand. Don, Don was one of the founders, along with Scott and Lynn, and I was there at the religious coalition when the steel workers first tried to take over a company in Youngstown, Youngstown Sheet and Tube, 1977, which was part of the religious coalition that put that first big one, big attempt.
Now you've got a real difficulty because these systems have to grow contrary to the limits of the ecological limits of the climate limits to grow. Real problem with markets in general, worker ownership floating in simple markets on their own. That doesn't mean we can dispense with the idea. But it means that I think our models are going to have to go well beyond that if we're to take account either the surplus problem, the environmental problem, the distribution, garbage workers versus the oil industry problem, and the problem of community versus workers. So that's un uncomplicating it for you on, on purpose. But let me give you the start of another end of the problem. Uh, I'll give you a real life example that gives you some idea of a different way to go about it. In the city of Cleveland, anybody know about the Cleveland model that's been developed? Some yeah. people hear about it. Uh, our group has been heavily involved in helping design the Cleveland model. And it is an attempt in America today to develop some elements, and I say this carefully, some elements of an alternative model that includes both the use of worker ownership and the market and the community as a whole, which is different from the workers. By the way, only 50% of the American society is on the workforce, 9% in manufacturing. Most people have factories in their mind, 9%. The other 50% are people at home, mostly women, people in prison, people in the army, and students, and elderly. In other words, half the society is not on the workforce at any one time. And if productivity gains are distributed in a new and powerful way, as they ought to be, and the work week goes down as it could today, the United States produces just about $200,000 per family of four today. Just a little under that. It could be a 20-hour week and 100000 per family of four today. So most of the society could be well out of the traditional factory workforce vision that we have in our minds. But the community as a whole is a different unit than the workers in a firm. And how we balance those different interests, and they are different and competing, and they don't necessarily work out together. Think of the police. Would you have them be an independent worker-owned company? <laughs> well, you wouldn't. You have to subordinate them to the community. They are. They are. They are. Yeah. Support they are. That for in some structural way they must be subordinate to the community, a collective form. And many industries are like that. Not all. Many are like that. In any case, the model I want to give you is, you know, this is very, we're just opening the door on these questions. But the model I want to give you is, is what's going on in uh, Cleveland. It's a very carefully designed model, and I'm sure there will be better improvements on it. So what we have now is a series of substantial worker-owned co-ops, co worker-owned companies, one person, one vote, just the kind we've been talking about. They are linked together with a non-profit corporation who is the benefit benefits the community, the proceeds, not just the workers. The workers own and control, just as we've been describing here, but they are subject also to checks by the community. What we know about some of the worker owned companies have been tried in the past, the or famous Oregon uh, wood co op supply wood companies, they, they, after, after a while they said, looking, they, they did attitude tests on the studies and surveys. The guys look like Republicans in their attitude. It's very conservative internal sociological process. Subordinate to the community in Cleveland, a revolving fund based on the Mondragon structures of those who know about Mondragon, so that money, you make some of the money, the workers put some of it back in so you can start more worker co ops and you keep building out around that. So that's the community worker ownership structure. We tried something like that in Youngstown. That's a long story about the steel workers with the city of Youngstown. But the structure tries to include those who are within the community and the workers in the firm also in a new balance. Moreover, in this case, and this is illustrative of, of a larger principle, in the city of Young, in the city of Cleveland, there are many so-called anchor institutions, hospitals and universities, take it up and go like big corporations come in, rip up the community and move on. Anchor institutions, hospitals, universities are mainly. In this area, the Cleveland Clinic, the uh, University Hospital, and Cape Western Reserve are the main ones. They have a lot of public money, taxpayer money. Those three institutions in that community, 40,000 people in one neighborhood, purchase $3 billion in goods and services every year. $3 billion. That's not including the wages and not including the construction. Just buying stuff. None of it from this area. 
This is a poor black area, average income of 18,000, 40,000 people, average income, 40% unemployment, zero. So the argument that has prevailed now is they could buy some of the many things they do need from a collective group of worker-owned companies that wasn't just to make some workers rich, but was to build the community. That's the principle. Community is larger than the workers, both in numbers and in, in concept. And in Marx, in my judgment, the vision of communism and the way he wrote about the Paris Commune and his vision in the early manuscripts is all about a collectivity that is much larger at any one point. Workers were dominant there in the industrial era. But the vision of the community, community is the central, I think, dominant vision that you find in the philosophical methods. Nonetheless, this is very practical in Cleveland today. And it's large scale. For instance, the, there's a big industrial scale laundry, which is, you know, does, it's near most ecologically advanced and for, for that part of the Midwest uses about a third of the heat and a third of the water, but it's owned by the workers in this structure. There's a solar insulation company that's more solar insulation, which just about to then exist in the entire state of Ohio. Now, right now, these are not thinking little firms. And there is also, uh, which is just about to open, and I love this one best, and a industrial scale greenhouse, solar, partly solar, three acres, three million heads of lettuce a year. That's the productive scale, is not your little thinking co-op that you're reading, but these are worker own co-ops of substance <coughs> and scale. But notice, notice the model and the design. We're using a quasi-public market purchases from a quasi-public system. Hospitals and universities do a lot of public money to help stabilize the market in which these worker-owned co-ops operate so as to undercut some of the problems that traditional market socialism has created. So it is a quasi-planning system that attempts to build community and worker ownership and to undercut the pressures in the market that produce environmental decay, growth and destruction, and also the competition between different groups. So what you begin, that's a sketch. That's a sketch of a libertarian community-based worker ownership system. If you wrote it larger in regional scale, you could elaborate it, but it does attempt to deal with the problem of the surplus in a different way, it tries to deal with what undercuts environmental problems, the inequities that occur in many worker-owned companies, the inegalitarian structures, and their dynamic effort when there are economies of scale to grow. The contention is, and this is one of the real problems of, of the socialist tradition, and I totally agree with what Rick said, the state-run system was even worse. And we are struggling, all of us involved, and everyone on this panel, with articulating a complex vision. David has taken a great deal of time in de developing a worker ownership vision. This takes it in a different direction to try to introduce the planning structure with a market and the community vision. And I want to emphasize that because much of the discussion does not take account of the local community as a community. And we're attempting to reintroduce that reconstruction into the process and the contention is that, here's, uh, here's a nasty point, so you've got to chew on this one for a while. The contention is that unless you reconstruct the culture and structure of community as a real experience and a real structure, you will never solve the problem of the market and the state. Particularly as we move down this dynamic, which is right. We are at $200,000 for every family of four. If you didn't waste, put all these prisoners and all this war and all the waste in the system, the medical system wastes half the, it's 10%, it should be 10% of the GDP, it's 20% or 18%. Take the waste out of that, we are at a 20 hour week already, or could be. And as we move the productivity down that line, in our lifetimes, we are talking about a transformation away from production as a central experience of work to a society which can open up very different possibilities if it sees itself as a community and is very sophisticated about how it designs the relationships of production, work, community, labor, and workers as a whole. The right amount of time. So I want to urge, obviously, I've gone very quickly here, kind of try to open up a couple dimensions of surplus, a couple issues about worker ownership and the problems that they face in a market economy without planning. 
The problem of planning itself needs to be balanced by the market, which we're also trying to do in, in the communities of Cleveland, using the market as a check on the planning system, and trying to move the conversation to that level of dimension of discussion, I think is the test we all face and need to face. I think it's the only way we can begin to really answer some of the questions that are emerging in American society today. One last bit. That description I gave you in Cleveland or in Yosa, Youngstown demanded worker ownership of the major production in Youngstown, Ohio, and they were able to get support from every major political figure in the state, including a very conservative governor, because they did their homework. We are experiencing that the kind of structure I, I just mentioned to you has powerful reach even to small businessmen who are in terrible shape, who hate the corporations and hate the banks as much as you do, and they want something that's real today, now, and our experience is that these ideas, which obviously come from a very different tradition, are not difficult for Americans to understand if you actually work them out and work them. If you actually have made sense of what you're trying to say and try to do it, they understand. Very important for us at this point to, to develop a 